former Prime Minister Dato Sri Najib Razak's decision to redirect 6.64 billion ringgit worth of government funds to repay 1MDB's borrowings was made to save the country. His lead counsel, Tan Sri Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, confirmed in court today that his clients had used part of the monies to repay IPIC and the rest to pay Chinese contractors for the now terminated ECRL and gas pipeline projects. He argued that the diversion was made in the full interest of the public and that not a cent went to the then Prime Minister. Najib and Treasury Sekjen Tan Sri Muhammad Irwan Seriga Abdullah are jointly facing six counts of criminal breach of trust involving government funds worth 6.64 billion ringgit. Both have pleaded not guilty on all charges and are out on a bail of 1 million ringgit, half of which they both coughed up today. Najib now faces 38 various charges involving a sum of around 9.5 billion ringgit. Putrajaya is axing four independent power producer projects in a move that will optimise capacity payments for power supply and ultimately save consumers 1.26 billion ringgit in bills. Capacity payments are aimed at compensating power producers for the amount of power they are able to generate. Energy Minister Yobin explains that around 30% of electric bill payments go towards capacity payment, which is very much dependent on the reserve margin and terms in power purchase agreements with IPPs. If the National Electric Reserve margin remains at the optimal 32% and these projects were allowed to continue, the reserve margin would be pushed to a higher than necessary level. Capacity payments would then go up and lead to higher electricity bills. Yo adds that the project had been awarded via direct negotiations and did not necessarily guarantee competitive terms for Putrajaya. The four projects are Malakov Corp and TNB's plant in Selangor, Aman Majestic and TNB's plant in Trunganu, Sabah Development Energy Sandakan and SM Hydro Energy's plant in Sabah, and Edra Power's solar power plant in Kedah. Public Bank saw third quarter net profit contract by 1.5% due to the absence of a one-off capital gain on investment of 43 million ringgit a year ago. Earnings slipped to 1.38 billion ringgit from 1.4 billion previously. However, excluding the one-off gain, net profit would have risen by 1.6%. Revenue for the quarter under review grew 5.9% to 5.6 billion ringgit. As for its first nine months, Net profit expanded by 4% to 4.2 billion ringgit, while top line grew 5.8% year on year to 16.4 billion. On its outlook, Public Bank founder and chairman Tan Sri Teh Hong Piao says the lender will reinforce its prudent and effective balance sheet management to sustain profitability amid the challenging operating environment. It expects to continue to be supported by demand for financing in residential and commercial properties passenger vehicles, as well as lending to small and medium-sized enterprises. The Wen family, which controls Selangor properties through Kain Malaysia, plan to take the company private. The move comes against a backdrop of a subdued property investment and development landscape. The proposed exercise entails a selective capital reduction and a corresponding capital repayment of 622.27 million ringgit. That's 5 ringgit and 70 cent per share, a premium of between 19.6% and 40.5% above the prevailing market price. Kain points out that Selangor Properties' shares have not traded at or above the offer price since March 2016, and trading liquidity of the shares has been low. Entitled shareholders collectively hold a 31.8% stake in the company, while Kain holds the rest. The counter, which was suspended today, will resume trading tomorrow. It closed at 4 ringgit and 6 sen yesterday, with a market cap of 1.4 billion ringgit. Malaysia Marine and Heavy Engineering Holdings says it's cautious on its outlook as the company reports its third consecutive quarterly loss on additional cost provisions. That quarter net loss stood at 22.7 million ringgit versus a net profit of 16.4 million. Revenue increased by 35% to 289.8 million ringgit. Meanwhile, its cumulative nine-month net loss widened to 97.5 million ringgit. 
Revenue for the period was a marginal 1% lower at 701.1 million ringgit.